Can you see me better now? Hi everyone, what's up? It is Francesca here from Small City Plants and today I'm going to be sharing nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine uh, jungle cacti slash dashidia with you uh, because I think they've gained some popularity recently and I'm going to speculate that it has something to do with all of us Hoya lovers out there, myself included, who began to really enjoy Hoyas, enjoy the hobby, and started looking for plants with similar sort of care needs. Uh, so these plants are a little bit more semi-succulent in nature, like higher humidity and bright light, but don't necessarily need it. So I'm just going to run through with you what I have, my experiences so far, and where I hope to see these plants going in the future. Fair warning, I do have my phone next to me. It might go off. I am having someone come to pick up a couple plants uh, this afternoon, so I've got to keep an eye on that for when they'll arrive. But, uh, I'm, you know what? Let's start off with the worst. Let's get it out of the way. <laughs> this is my very sad looking Thanksgiving cactus. Uh, I'll put the Latin name on screen, but I'm pretty sure it's a Schlothera. So you can see it's got this beautiful kind of sun-stressed purpley color at the top. This used to be a really full bushy looking plant that I got from Ikea. Uh, they're not very expensive when you get them at the right time of year. Uh, and then promptly after I got it, I forgot to water it for weeks at a time in terracotta. And its roots dried out and then I remembered I had it and I watered it and all of the roots rotted. So I had to get rid of most of the plant. This is the stalk that's left. Uh, I have a lot to propagate from, but I'm still, I just want it to be happy and keep growing for a while. It also has some cat bite marks at the top here. Uh, like Hoya, I think almost every plant that I'm gonna be showing you today, if not every plant, is pet safe. Uh, so by pet safe, I mean it won't hurt your plant if they eat it, but it'll hurt your plant. <laughs> um, so yeah, this plant is really beautiful. I actually can't remember what color flowers it has. I think it has pink flowers. Uh, you can get uh, Thanksgiving cactus with lots of different kinds of flowers. People often call them um, Christmas cactus, but they are different. As far as I'm aware, I'm aware of three different kinds. There's the Thanksgiving cactus, which is this one, the Christmas cactus, and the Easter cactus. And the difference really comes between like, is about these spikes. So you see kind of on the edge of these leaves, or I don't know what to call it, these pads, there's these little spikes right here. So um, based on whether they're spiky or round or what direction they face, that can help you identify what type of kind of seasonal Schlothera, it is Schlothera. I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> um, but yeah, this one in particular is a Thanksgiving cactus. I really wanna do better with this this year. I have seen like full pots of these, which are like passed down for generations. And that is what I want. I want a giant full basket of Thanksgiving cactus. Maybe I'll mix in some Easter and some Christmas cactus just for the fun of it. I mentioned before, I'm not a huge fan of mixing different kinds of plants in the same pot, but there are some plants which for some reason they get a pass with me for and it's okay. And I think this would be one of them because I think it could be cool to have just like little variations and it flowering in a big pot at different times of the year. I don't know, I think that could be cool. I've also seen there's a variegated Thanksgiving cactus that goes around and probably of the other, uh, other types of cacti too. I think wild fern has one that's actually grown quite quickly from a small cutting and I wouldn't mind a variegated one. Uh, I think that would again look really beautiful in the same pot as a non-variegated one to give it a little contrast. So maybe in the future, but for now I'm just really settled uh, trying to settle this guy in and grow him out to his fullest potential. Another plant, let's just keep going with the kind of jungle cacti to start and then I'll switch over into my Dachidia. So the next one is a, it looks a bit of a mess as well because I bought it in a TLC section of a plant store and it was sold to me as a, what was it sold to me as an orchid cactus? It's very hard to get this to focus on it because it's such like a yeah, straggly TLC plant, but there we go a little bit. Um, 
if some of you out there, it was sold to me as an orchid cactus and I'll put up a photo of what an orchid cactus normally looks like. Uh, but if any of you have any other ID for this plant, please leave it down below because this place I went to is known for not labeling their plants correctly. So um, please let me know that it is definitely 110% a jungle cacti in this cute little kitty planter. Um, and if it is a orchid cactus, the flowers look really, really beautiful. Um, I like the shape of it and you can already see it has a little bit of sun stress. towards the bottom of the leaf there. So I think that's really pretty. And so I could see a really beautiful sun stress pot of this, but kind of similar to my Thanksgiving cactus. This one is still in the settle in, grow it out phase before I do any kind of propagating or messing with it because it's had a stressful life so far. We're TLCing it. By the way, all of these jungle cacti that I'm showing you are in every single, yeah, every single jungle cacti I'm showing you is in a chunky um, potting mix. So it is a mix of soil, um, cocoa coir, orchid bark, horticultural charcoal, perlite, some leca, um, really making sure there's a lot of airflow. They are not in traditional cacti mixes. And I think that's really important to note for your um, jungle cacti. Jungle cacti are often epiphytes, meaning they grow off of other plants. They grow in more humid environments than cacti. They are more similar to like your philodendron growing environment than a cacti desert growing environment. So they need that uh, well draining chunky potting mix for them to do really well. Not a sandy dry potting mix at all. Which one should I show you next? I'll show you this one because it's in a cute little egg planter. This is my Ripsalis pilocarpa. Let me see if I can focus here because I really want you to be able to see the little, there we go, the little fuzzy hairs on this. So there are a lot of different kinds of Ripsalis. This one, the pilocarpa, is special because this is all fuzzy. So all of these here have little kind of fuzzy spikes on them. It doesn't hurt. It is more like fuzz. But I wouldn't say it's soft. It's like a coarse fuzz. Uh, this plant has been so easy to take care of for me. Really easy grower. Uh, it's already putting out new growth on the sides. I really think it's one that is going to look really beautiful trailing down. Uh, and I think the flowers are supposed to be beautiful too. And if I can find some pictures of the flowers, I will put them up on the side here. This one, I have, like the others, under a Barina uh, T5 Grow Light. Uh, seems to be doing really well. Sun stresses if it gets too close, but that's okay. Sometimes that's even desired. But yeah, it doesn't require a lot of care. And I think that's kind of the beauty of these plants. They're really beautiful and a little more tropical looking. I think they're really good at filling out your space and making it look a little bit more lush without requiring a ton of care, like maybe some of the other plants like Alocasia or Anthurium do. I think they're really nice, beautiful. I don't want to call them filler plants because I feel like it downgrades them, but filler in a sense that they make your environment look a little bit more lush. Next up, I will show you this guy. So if you watched, I did an unboxing uh, back at the beginning of the year from Cactus on Lean, which I will link up above, like I'll put the card up here and I'll also put it in the description. And I unboxed two jungle cacti from Cactus on Lean, uh, which is a Canadian plant store based somewhere in Quebec, probably around Montreal. Um, and this is a Lepismium hueltianum. I'll put the name on the screen, of course, but I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Hueltianum. Um, it is such a pretty plant. So in that first video, I really encourage you to go back and watch it. This looked so sad. I was really concerned about the health of this plant, but it is doing so well. It has a new spike coming out the top. Um, look at all this new growth. Like, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. And I think it has a little bit of, oh, is that thrips? 
Do you have thrips? Girl has thrips. All right, I guess I'm showering all of these now and doing a thrips treatment. Uh, girl. Girl. All right, well, she's really pretty, but she has thrips. I'll be right back. All right, well, I just took her to the shower and gave her a treatment. I'll also be treating all of these plants and any others near it on that shelf up behind me. Oh, I've been waiting to get beneficial insects for another two weeks. Now I might have to push that forward. All right, at least it's not mealies. We can deal with thrips. We can deal with thrips. All right. Mm -hmm. That, by the way, <laughs> with my Lepismium Weltianum. And I bet if that one has thrips, this one does too. So let me show you this one and then I'm also gonna take it to the shower. All right, I can't see any live thrips on this, but it was right beside it. I'm gonna take it into the shower just to be sure. Um, but this is my Lepismium cruciform. This here uh, is really like, a beautiful plant and also if you watch the same video where I got my Lepismium Pueltianum, I got my Cruciform at the same time and it has grown so much. Again, I was really worried that it wasn't going to make it, that it wasn't going to survive and it has just blown me away. Look at that new little growth there. So this is just like a really beautiful plant. Again, I'm going to put pictures up of what it will look like when it blooms and yeah, it's just pretty. I don't know why. It's just one of those plants that, again, little kitty cat plant here, uh, I think will grow out to be something very beautiful. And again, one of those nice kind of like interesting lush trailing plants to have in your collection. Putting aside to treat for thrips. I'll also put this one aside to treat for thrips. I don't see any live thrips on any of these. I'm going to check all of my plants back there now, though. Uh, this one too. Let's move to my favorite. This is the last jungle cactus I'm going to show you. Then we'll move to my Deschidia. This boy. He's so big. He's so beautiful. He does not have thrips. Well done. Such a good plant. I'm going to spray them anyway, though. I'm going to be spraying everything. It's the rest of my night. I got my Saturday night plans now. Woo! Uh, it has lots of new growth points. This is, if you haven't figured it out, it's very common. You can get it here, at least, in most of your big box stores. This is a rickrack cactus or a zigzag cactus or a fishbone cactus. I personally prefer the term fishbone cactus uh, to describe it. It's really easygoing really giant grower. It's really just one of those, like, I feel like it's almost a staple plant in a houseplant collection. I don't know many people who have a lot of houseplants who don't have this particular one. Its leaves are quite like thicker than any of the other jungle cacti I've shown you. And it is very, very drought tolerant. It needs water. <laughs> I'm not saying that you should deprive it of water, but if you forget or if you go away, it's probably going to bounce back just fine. It's really resilient, really beautiful, and just, yeah, provides that nice green space on your shelf. So this fishbone cactus is definitely one I recommend if you don't have it already. And similar to like Hoya care, that's it. That's what these feel like. These are so thick. They feel like Hoya leaves. Um, yeah, they feel very succulent in nature. So beautiful, beautiful. Fishbone cactus. Away from the thrips collection. This one I'm gonna spray really well because this is the only one of these plants that actually came from my office and I do not want to be taking any thrips back there. Um, this here is my uh, Deschidia oyantha variegata. So, hello. 
Uh, Dachidia oyantha is just the green form, so the variegated form has, um, you can see there's like kind of these white outlines on the little leaves, and this vine here just has a lot of white. Um, it's a really pretty plant. It's almost bluish in tone, uh, so it's a little bit different to have in your collection. Really easy to care for. So Dachidia and Hoya are very, very closely related. The difference, I believe, comes down to their flowers. So I'll put up a picture of the Oyantha flowers, but they look very, very different than like a Hoya flower would. Uh, so I think that's where some of the difference comes down to, but I am aware that certain species of Hoya and Dachidia have sometimes switched classification backwards and forwards depending on like as botanists and hortical, I think just, yeah, botanists, as botanists learn more. So I've had this plant for a while. I wouldn't call it the fastest grower, but it's quite a steady grower. And I think it looks really nice in your collection. I think it's one of those kind of like head of hair. That's why I have it in here, plants. Um, one that's just really beautiful and I think a little understated. So whereas maybe some of the jungle cacti are like standout statement plants, Dachidia are, I think, more of a subtle house plants. I don't think they stand out as much, but that's not always necessarily a bad thing. Right next to it, I got this from a trade a few weeks ago. Christina, if you're watching, thank you so much. I love this plant. Um, this is my Dachidia ovata. So it's also known as the watermelon Dachidia, and I think you can probably see why because of the markings on those leaves. It's really, really stunning. Um, I want this to be a nice full pot. So I have three, four cuttings in here. I think three. Uh, oh no, four, four. Uh, and they're all starting to put out new growth now. This is in standard room humidity. All of these plants actually are just in regular room humidity, um, growing very, very well. Never really had any issues with them. With them. Um, kind of simple understated plants. Again, that's what Dachidia really are to me, are these kind of understated plants. Although maybe when the uh, Ovada, this one grows out and gets a little sun stressed, maybe it'll be more of a statement plant then because I'll put up a picture of what it could look like and yes please, I would like it to look like that. Think I can get that baby to look that big? Keep your fingers crossed for me. Last, but certainly not least, I have my Ikea bag. Uh, this plant has been a nightmare to root. I had heard previously that it likes humidity, but it has been a nightmare to root for me. So it's in the Ikea bag and I think it's finally doing something. So let me open her up. And don't worry, I wash my hands thoroughly after the thrips treatment. I'm not transferring anything in here. So this, are you rooting? Sort of. Oh yeah, you're rooting, finally, like three months later. Uh, this is a Dachidia hirsuta. So I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see it, but these little leaves actually are kind of spiky and rough in their texture. They're really, really cute. And uh, I just keep going back to the same word, it's understated. The plant is understated. Something that really sold me on getting this plant in the trade though, again, thank you, Christina, is um, looking up what the flowers look like. So again, I'll put a picture up. Uh, as you can see, it's very different than Hoya flowers, but the leaves, like, could this not, tell me this doesn't look like a serpent's, right? Like, tell me this doesn't look like a really baby leafed Hoya, because it does. It feels different, but there is that kind of similarity there. But the blooms, very, very different. So this little baby is going to go back in its bag. Air exchange. Yeah, if you do have trouble rooting any of your plants, especially uh, some maybe humidity loving Hoya or Dachidia. Go with the little Ziploc bag, open it up every couple days, blow in there, do some air exchange, and it should root 
uh, eventually. Like this I can see has roots coming out in there now. It's in near 100% humidity in that bag. And there we have it. So, I mean, it's been a shorter video today, but I hoped you kind of enjoyed seeing some of these plants and watching me freak out about the fact that I have thrips. It's all right, I can deal with it. For those of you who are curious about how I'm gonna be handling uh, those thrips, I immediately sh washed off the leaves. I like took a shower head, sprayed off the thrips. I put some Dr. Doom on there and that's sitting on the plant now. I will be doing the same to all of my jungle cacti preventatively, as well as any other plants in the area, just a preventative spray. But I'm also gonna be thoroughly going over every single plant. And if I see any indication that there are thrips on other plants, I will also be doing the shower off spray and then isolating for a minimum of six weeks. But the rest will just get a preventative treatment. Uh, I am getting beneficials, as I mentioned, in a couple of weeks. So I've just got to really keep it at bay for a couple weeks and then beneficial insects will get rid of it like that. Stay on top of your beneficial bug orders. Don't be like me and get cheap and lazy about it. <laughs> um, yeah, beneficial insects are the best way to go for thrips outbreaks. They are what will get rid of it the fastest, the quickest, the most reliably, but you have to knock off and kill the parents first. And that is what I will be doing is getting rid of those adult thrips. My day just got a whole lot more interesting, dull. Plant parenthood, it's never a dull moment. All right, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing some of these plants, maybe get a little bit inspired about how you can spice up your Hoya collection a bit or your plant collection. And if you liked this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Also just comment below and wish me good luck with the thrips. I need some love and support right now. And yeah, if you want to see more videos from me, you can also hit subscribe. I will be posting new videos every week for 2023. And wherever you are, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.